and this handful will easily give us 500 bucks back out of it. You just have to know a little bit something about how they are marked to make the most money. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some items I just picked up. We're going to look at some military hat badges, some badges in general. These would belong on a hat. This one's specifically from a Navy, as are several other ones that I got right here. Now, several of these are made out of sterling, like these two right here. One of these is solid cast with 14 karat gold overlays across parts of it as you can see here. This one weighs just at two ounces on its own. At the value of silver right now, this should easily be worth close to 40 bucks. So it's a nice piece all the way around, even if I was just going to scrap it. These are just a couple of the sterling pins that I got. These would belong on 1940s, World War II, or before naval officers' caps, their hats. Now, as I said, these are sterling. If you don't know what to look for, you may not even realize that they are sterling because they look nearly identical to this brass one right here. Now, these are marked on the back. They're very nicely marked on the wings here, sterling. Not only are they marked on the back that they are sterling, but they have a maker's mark. Certain maker's marks on certain pins can increase the value several hundred bucks. Some of these by the right maker can easily go close to 500 bucks. Depends on the version, it depends on the marking and the whole works. There are some with even more gold on them than these that can go for some phenomenal money. Now that's not the only ones I acquired either. This is another one with some sterling and this is what's called a chief petty officer's cap badge. Now this exact example here easily sells for 175 and it can sell all the way up to 250 bucks. It's something that most people pass by all the time and just don't assume that something small like this is going to be worth that kind of money. Another sterling one. Now these are for collars more than anything else. Solid sterling. Some of these can go for 50 bucks on their own. It doesn't just have to be navy. I've got quite a few U.S. Army ones also. Now a couple of these were made overseas. They're solid cast. The construction means of these badges can help to increase the value as well. The color of them can also dictate when it was from and the maker as well would be marked on the back on many of these. So these are something that I look for all the time. It's something that I have found hundreds of them throughout the years. Many times I find them on a cap, on a hat still, which is usually the best. Now if these were on a hat still, they could go for even more than what I have. But these are always sellers for us because someone will run into a hat and need the badge. Not only that, sometimes you can buy a hat and it has the wrong badge on it, one that would have been maybe made later on and wouldn't be appropriate for the cap, the hat that you may have. So replacement wise, these are extremely easy to sell. I got around 25 of these total from various different entities. I've got some Chief Petty Officers hat badges besides the one I showed you, some Coast Guard, um, Naval Reserve, and several other different kinds also. I'll probably show some close-ups and talk about these on a Patreon as well as a YouTube membership video and show you specifically what to look for in there. We're going to hop over though right now and show you what some of these can sell for straight from eBay sold so you can easily see that that there's some major value in these and that they are well worth hunting down and sourcing any day of the week. Now they all look pretty much the same from the front. So it's not the front, just like a military button or a belt buckle from a military uniform. It's not always what it looks like. Many times it's just the maker, the markings on the back of the items. Just like the ones that I have, this is the same basic principle. Now, it doesn't even have to be sterling to be super, super valuable. This one is. You can see the marking on the right right there. But the maker itself is what dictates the value. The construction means as well can help dictate the value. This one's gold filled. 
So there's a lot of gold in this one too. Gold filled is around the eight carat percent. So it's about the equivalent of eight carat. So the bottom part with the crossed anchors could be worth some big money on its own just for the scrap value of the gold. No one in their right mind would scrap this though because it's far more valuable as a military collectible relic. This is pre-World War II, probably from the 20s by the maker's mark and the construction of this piece itself. Here's yet another one. Once again, it is marked on the back. Most of these sorts will be marked sterling. This one, obviously, you can see the Finchley maker mark as well. Now, many of these will be constructed of multi-pieces, just like the one I have. This is constructed basically the same way. This is another fine example, and as you can see, this one went for $285. Now, the hat badges themselves are not super, super scarce because they made hundreds of thousands of these sorts of things over the time frame that they would have been issued. They would have been issued all the way back to pre-World War I. The older they are, the better they could be as well. So an earlier one would be far scarcer than some of the ones from World War II. So the earlier, the better. The material they're made of, the better, as well as the maker's mark. So if it has a better maker's mark, the more valuable it will be. Many of these maker's marks can be tracked down by government purchase records that are held by the federal government. You can do requests. There are books out there that cover the maker's names, when they were in business, what they made, how many they supplied as well. Most of the government purchase records for these will state how many dozens were purchased when they were delivered, the requisition number, and the whole works. So here's basically the same Chief Petty Officer's hat badge that I just showed you a few moments ago. This one easily, as I said, can sell for $175 to $250. This one, as well as several others, did sell for that price range. So it is an established price for these. Chief Petty Officer's hat badges are far more scarce than the ones I showed you with the eagle and the crossed anchors. Chief Petty Officer's badges, if they go back far enough, can be worth way more than this as well. Some of them can sell in the thousand dollar range. So I always, always look for any of these sorts of things. Some of these were hand soldered, hand put together. That usually means that they're far earlier than World War II and could date to just after or even before World War I. Ones made during World War I or before World War II will almost always sell for far more unless the World War II badge is made by a very specific small group of companies that are highly sought after. And here is an example of the smaller one that I showed you as well. This is basically the same thing. It's sterling. This one is marked also. And it is gold filled just like mine. Gold filled is what you want. You want sterling and gold filled markings on them for them to carry the best value possible. Many times you may run into these sorts of hat badges and they may be black as can be because of tarnish. So don't pass up the ones that are dark and dingy and dirty looking because most most all of the time they can easily be cleaned up and brought back to a sparkling shine like this one here. State sales are great to find them, local live auctions, flea markets especially. We get them from pickers around here quite often. Sometimes they'll save up and get me a whole bunch all at once. This is one of my favorite areas along with military in general like military buttons, belts, buckles, uniform pieces. All of that sort of thing can sell for some phenomenal money. It's going to take you a little bit of a learning curve though to learn what's the best ones. It may also take you buying a bunch of books to figure out everything to begin with. Once you learn them though, there's only so many different varieties or versions of these to be looking for because they don't make them like this anymore at all. So we've been into military for decades. I go to military shows, which is also another good place to find them. Not every military dealer understands all the markings and such forth on the backs of them, especially in the buttons and the smaller items also. So there are plenty of places to source these out, plenty of places to sell them. eBay is probably the best way to sell most all of these sorts of items. They're super hot, they're super collectible, and they sell really well really well. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
Imagine Gore can only be stopped by Super Joe Commander with the one-two punch and Power Light Vest and Luminos, one pen light battery for each not included. Imagine their fight by night with light. Gore flashes his red power ray. Imagine Luminos has the power on and blocks Gore's ray with his own light. Imagine as lights out for Gore. Super Joe Commander with the one-two punch and Power Light Vest, Luminos and Gore, new from Hasbro, each sold separately.